Palantir stock pops 20% and continues to silence its critics. Let's talk about it. So Palantir technology stock is up 20% in after hours and pre-market trading um, after their strong earnings report. So the company reported after the closing bell on February 5th and delivered several highlights. We're here to cover it for our viewers. Uh, So let's just jump right in, guys. Um, This stock has been on a roller coaster ride, but its recent performance is undoubtedly turning heads. Tell us about some of those highlights. Well, the so they reported earnings after the bell last night. Earnings came in right in line with expectations at around uh, eight cents a share. Um, revenue slightly beat estimates. They they came in at six hundred eight million. Analysts were projecting six hundred three million. Um, but I think, and I we're going to talk about this a little bit later, Lacey. What really had the stock jumping after hours was the forward guidance from the company. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Show, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, yeah, you had mentioned something um, that investors particularly are excited about is the company's forward guidance. Mm -hmm. So tell us more about that. What does it mean for the future? Okay, so uh, Palantir reported strong growth in their um, commercial business. Uh, I think they I think let me see if I consult my notes here. Uh, 70 percent. Yeah, thank you, Thomas. It was like 70 percent year over year. That's and the then they're that projecting to do another 40% commercial growth for next year, year over year. And that's going to mean probably about a 20% growth in revenue year over year, which would be about the same as this year. And they're projecting to be uh, continue the track of being positive earnings for all of next year. Um, uh, Alex Karp is basically saying right now they're growing so fast, it's hard for the company to keep up with the growth. Mm-hmm. Well, right. I, I think the guidance is is cautious. I mean, the full year guidance was strong. Q1 guidance is really cautious. I think that what's happening here is, is Palantir is in this discovery phase and pointing back to the 70% commercial growth where the commercial business is discovering that Palantir is awesome. Uh, to me, Palantir is one of, if not the most comprehensive cloud-based AI platforms that a business can utilize because it starts with just data management and analytics, but extends that into threat detection, threat prevention, and mitigation. So it's like you've got security and data all in the same place. Uh, I think Palantir, this story is is only in the very, very earliest innings. And one of the neat things about how they're approaching their commercial clients, their go-to-market platform with commercial, um, with uh, sorry, their go-to-market strategy, excuse mm-hmm. me, with their commercial clients is, they're conducting these um, on on not on site, but they're these live boot camps where essentially they're letting the customers jump in, interact with the product, and the company says in their own literature they go from zero to use case in five days, mm-hmm. and that's really a clever way of doing it because the customers are seeing for themselves how the software works, what it can do mean for their business, and that's just making it you know, very sticky as far as that revenue growth goes for the company. For sure. Okay. So we've had this kind of, yeah, but perspective comp on several other stocks that we've covered here on Market Beat. Um, But it's evident here with Palantir critics that seemingly their attitude, what is their backing with this? I mean, go ahead, Thomas. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sure Chris's viewpoints, but my view with the analysts and the, the market belief in general, not so much retail investors, but the, the analyst is they're just not on board with this company for some reason. Their their sentiment has, and there's been some changes since the report, but they're still lagging the market. Their sentiment fell from hold to reduce over the last year. The price target's rising, but it still lags the market. I think that uh, the analysts are kind of in this shifting discovery phase too, where they're going to discover that businesses like Palantir and it's going to continue to grow. I see uh significant potential catalyst in their sentiment. They continue to upgrade the stock and raise their price targets. They could send this thing up triple digits. Yeah, I've, I've been following Palantir um, since they went public by a direct listing in 2020. And mm-hmm. um, the the yeah, but sort of started with Palantir then. There were a lot of analysts that didn't like the fact that they went public via a direct listing because that kind of worked around the whole IPO process. Then there was, they were too reliant on government contracts. 
Then it was, how are you going to monetize AI? And ironically now, now one of the yeah buts is, well, yeah, you're growing the commercial side of the business, but what are you going to do for the government side yeah. of the business? Because as I wrote in my article, it's not going to be as easy for them to do these um, boot camps for their uh, for their private, you know, public sector, I should say, the government mm -hmm. contracts. But that doesn't mean they can't get it done. It just means it's going to take longer, and they're already in the you know in the early stages of doing that. Plus, Palantir has a huge first mover advantage with the government. Therein lies some of the other questions that some analysts have to Thomas's point of why they're not on board. Uh, some analysts don't necessarily like the clients necessarily that Palantir has decided to take on from a government perspective. But right now, with Palantir showing the fact that it can grow not only the government side of the business, but the commercial side of the business, I agree with Thomas. This just looks like analysts are a little behind the curve on this one and they're catching up. Yeah, I, I think it might be a case, and sometimes I'm at fault of this. They just want it to be bad, right? Even though mm -hmm. it's persistently proving to them that it's not bad, they want it to be bad. Eventually, the community will get on board with the story as it's playing out, and it's right. very bullish. Okay, so Palantir has been here before. The stock has shot up in the last two earnings reports, um, and it's pulled back sharply each time, but to higher lows, right? Yeah, right. There are some pretty interesting things in the chart, and we'll look at that in a second. But what we're seeing is volatility is the tug of war between the retail market, which sees Palantir advancing AI and advancing its business, and the analysts, which just don't for some reason. Right. Let's pull that chart up. So like Chris was saying, you know, Palantir IPO'd. It shot up on all this hope of AI and what it could possibly do. Analysts just didn't buy into it. You get some sideways trading and then a downtrend. Here we got a nice bottom. And you notice this bottom kind of coincides right here with when AI starts getting the market's attention. And all of a sudden, this bottom turns into a reversal. And you get some rallying here. And this is clearly an uptrend. You've got a reversal that plays into higher highs and higher lows. Yep. Right now, we're making another higher a higher low. We mm -hmm. broke out. And I think that we set an intraday high. We haven't quite made a closing high yet. But it looks like we're on track for another new high. Technically speaking, if this market breaks above this red resistance line, I would expect a good little pop up to maybe the 24, 26 region, and then for it to come back down. And I would target this region right over here as the next entry point. We'll see how that plays out. Okay, so ultimately a big question here. Do you guys think Palantir is a buy, sell, or hold? Buy Palantir stock now, hold your position, or wait for a better entry point? Okay, so I just, I'll, I'll, I'll stick with what I said in my article, and I think right now it's probably hold for better entry point. Uh, to Thomas's point and that he's made on several of these videos, you know, the chart's telling you a story right now. That story in the last two earnings report is it shoots up higher after earnings, pulls back a little. I'd wait for that little bit of a pullback before I jump in. Mm -hmm. um, something to remember is, the 20% year over year growth that they're talking about is very good, but it it's something that the analysts are saying, is that worth a premium valuation that right now the company's drawing? That's for investors to, to think about. If you're a long-term investor, that really is not something you have to worry about. But I would still say you maybe want to wait for it to pull back a little bit rather than chase it at this high price and then buy when it when you when there's a little bit more established price yeah th there could be a pullback and i would certainly be a buyer on a pullback yes. i think that there's also a chance the stock will continue higher right now mm -hmm. i'm going to go ahead and call it a trade a trading buy for now it's also a, a, a an investing buy for the long term okay well that is the update we have for now we hope you found this information valuable for your investment decisions remember to like and subscribe to this channel for more insights um, and updates on the stock market. Stay informed with us right here at Market Beat. We'll talk soon.